I seem to be hearing more and more frequently of nut allergies and coconut allergies. So I took my famous real deal chocolate chip cookie recipe and I converted it to be coconut and nut free for you guys. You can find the recipe in my Meals Made Simple cookbook, but today I'm showing you how to make it and also putting the recipe on my blog againstallgrain.com. We are going to get started with one egg white, some coconut sugar, which I like to use in place of a brown sugar that you would traditionally use in a chocolate chip cookie recipe. And then some honey. Cream those together to get some air into the batter and then also just to help really incorporate the sugars into the egg. And then moving on to that secret ingredient that I use to keep these nut free. So instead of using almond butter or cashew butter, which I typically would, I switched to sesame butter, quote unquote, which is tahini, to keep these nut free. So when you open your jar, you're going to see quite a bit of oil on the top. And what you wanna do is really dig down and get everything incorporated so that you don't end up with really oily flat cookies. Give it a good mix. Depending on the brand, some have more oil than others. Some are a little bit harder to mix. This one is doing pretty good for me here. And sometimes some of the tahini or butter gets kind of stuck down at the bottom of the jar. So just make sure that you're using a spoon or a knife and really getting that all mixed in. Okay, we need a half a cup. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about tahini, I think of hummus. <laughs> and while this might kind of smell like that and give you a little bit of a hummus kind of feeling, they don't taste like hummus, I promise. They are sweet and crunchy, a little bit chewy on the inside. Now we have some arrowroot powder, vanilla extract, one quarter teaspoon baking soda, and just a dash of sea salt. Mix that up again. Okay, I'm just going to stop the mixer Scrape down the sides just to get all of that arrowroot powder incorporated in there. And then let's mix it one more time. Okay, now to add our chocolate chips. So I'm using a mixture of some mini chocolate chips and some extra dark chocolate chips. I kind of like the difference in the flavor of the two. Make sure that you find some that are dairy free and gluten free. Or if you have a favorite bar of paleo chocolate that's sweetened with you know, maple syrup or coconut sugar, just chop that up and add it to the batter. So something that I've started doing because I don't like to have my cookies be super flat and super crispy is I put this whole thing into the freezer for about 15 minutes, let it chill, and then I scoop the dough out onto the tray. If you like your cookies extra flat and extra crispy, go ahead and just get them into the oven right away. I'm gonna go put this in the freezer and we'll be back. All right, these just came out of the freezer. So I have my cookie sheet and a medium sized cookie scoop. These do spread, so give them some space on the tray and then also don't use your biggest cookie scoop or you'll end up with cookies the size of your head, which if you have kids, they probably won't complain. I'm just gonna do six per tray just to give them room. I will say, depending on what kind of tahini you're using, these cookies can kind of turn out slightly different each time, so I never really know when they're going into the oven just how much they're going to spread. Pop these in and then we'll get our second tray ready. All right, these are done. My kids are gonna be so happy when they come in and smell these. And these are perfect because you can send them to school with your kids if they go to a nut-free school. And then just tuck any extras away, if you have any, into the freezer. For the full recipe, head to againstallgrain.com.